this is how do I know I'm not a butterfly? A philosophy for life, as William B. Irvine puts it, is what I feel I stumbled across one January afternoon in the Austrian Alps a few years back. Now I do mean practical philosophy, none of that fairy philosophy. To quote the comedian Jimmy Carr, how do I know I'm not a butterfly? I drove here, you twat. I've always taken some interest in self-development, philosophy and psychology literature. Being quite a frustrated and angry young person, I, at the time, somewhat unconsciously enjoyed those genres, but didn't really understand why. I was in Mittersill in Austria, taking part in an international altitude training camp. And as always, I had a laptop and a couple of books with me, necessities on camps, as days are typically spent training, eating, and then a lot of time just recovering in the hotel until getting ready to train again. I've always loved history, and had a book with me about the development of maritime culture in Britain, the majority covering the Navy. I read a few on the subject around that time and can't be certain, but I'm pretty sure it was Empire of the Seas by Brian Lavery. I remember learning that Samuel Pepys, yes, the guy that kept a diary and buried cheese in his back garden, had a big influence in reforms in the Admiralty in its earlier days. He basically helped the Navy professionalise itself the strict training of the men and the captains, particularly in mindset and discipline, being an important part of that process. Without sifting through the book, I'm sure what I came across was along the lines of the men were to be applauded for the stoicism they showed throughout the entire campaign. Now, any words that I don't understand, I tend to Google. I screenshot them too, so that when I clear out my photos, I see that word again and hopefully gain a bit more familiarity with it. So I put this stoicism into the search bar and then spent the next couple of hours reading everything Wikipedia had to say about it. I was hooked straight away. Here was direct advice and methods for improvement in a lot of the areas that I've been struggling in or needed help with. The meditations of Marcus Aurelius, don't worry, the old guy from Gladiator is what I thought for first thought too, was the top bit of classical literature recommended. I ordered it for when I arrived back in the UK. I virtually spent all of the rest of the spare time that trip reading about Stoicism online and watching lectures on YouTube, which worked out pretty well actually, as although a lot of the writing in them was really beautiful, if I hadn't, I'm not sure the meditations would have particularly made much sense to me. I'm certainly no expert in the field, but if anyone would want to look into the philosophy more, I'd suggest starting with a modern book. Donald Robertson, Ryan Holiday, Massimo Pigluici, to name a few of the authors from whose work I take a lot from. Then I'd have a look at the classical texts. I'm currently doing a course run by a brilliant non-profit organisation called Modern Stoicism. That is the reading advice they give the newcomers of the philosophy too. A lot has happened in my life since stumbling across the Stoics. Stoicism isn't the only thing that helps guide my mindset but I have tried out and practice a fair number of the practical stoic techniques suggested regularly. I find it useful in so, so many ways, too many to list them all in one blog or blog post. I do, regarding sporting performance though, love Cicero's archer analogy. I thought of it regularly during the last few years of competing. It's a beautiful description of controlling the controllables. It is in, w within an archer's power to practice as well as she can, consistently learn new ways in which to do so and to do so better. Eat and rest well, research the best materials to make the best bow and arrow as possible. Learn ways to be as calm and as alert as she can be, but to take aim and release, but as soon as the arrow is released, whether the target is hit or not is out of his control. A sudden gust of wind could take the arrow off course. An animal might walk into its path, the target may itself move. All of these things the archer has no influence over. I find this easy to translate in terms of judo. I can't control how good the opponent is or how well prepared they are. I can't influence the draw. I have no say over the referee in the middle, etc. The Stoic teacher Epictetus also made many references to training for the Olympics and grappling analogies in his work, which I also enjoy and make connection with. I'm really enjoying the, the current course. It's great to be guided by experts in the field and to be feeling some benefits of the techniques taught already. I consider myself an interested person, so I'm finding it brilliant to be connected to a platform containing such a wealth of knowledge and practical advice. 
thank you to everyone at Modern Stoicism that is making it possible.